Welcome to the Colt AR-15 resource. In this video, we're going to look at the Colt model R0633DC. What this is inside this box is a Colt R0633 DOE or Department of Energy 9mm submachine gun upper receiver conversion kit. I don't know for sure what the exact numbers are, but I've heard that there were 2,000 upper receiver conversion kits put on the market with about 1,500 going to DOE and another 500 being released on the commercial market. But like I said, I, that just came from another video I found online. Um, I don't know if that's accurate or not. So the box that you see here is 14 and a half inches long. It's four and a half inches deep and two and a half inches tall. That gives you an idea of the size of the box. Uh, one end of the box is marked model R0633DC. The opposite side of the box has the mil-spec pa uh, mil packaging markings. And then the other end of the box has just got plastic remnant on it um, look like maybe a packing slip envelope or something like that. So this isn't meant to be presented as an unboxing video. I am not the first owner of this. There's been a, a two or three people that's owned this before me. I had an opportunity to add it to my collection and I couldn't pass that up. Uh, you don't see new in the box conversion kits online uh, too often or like new. So let's open this up and uh, I'll show you what came in the box. Starting out, you had this small accessory packet. What's in here is very, very limited, nothing uh, too exciting. You have this operator's manual that covered the M16A2 carbine, the commando variant, the 9mm SMG, and then the M4 carbine. You get a copyright date on the front of 1993 and a revision date on the back of May of 97. You have this small document that lists authorized Colt repair centers. This item is revision March of 91. I do not know what the publication date is. Yet a purchaser slash warranty card. This is revision D of 1992. Yeah, revision D, May 1992. Then you've got this small accessory bag that has what I believe is a site Colt Mark site tool. A, a front pivot pin conversion kit for the large hole lower receivers and then a AccuWedge. This accessory bag is dated August of 90, 1996. And then the bag that the accessories were in overall is dated January of 1996. So let me get the accessories off to the side and we'll get the upper receiver out of the box. So the upper receiver comes in this blue barrier bag. And this blue barrier bag unfolds several more inches from this other end. And so it was uh, it was long and it's open on both sides. One day I accidentally dropped the upper receiver out of one of the ends. Luckily it landed on carpet. Um, but to prevent that from happening again and to minimize some of the damage to the, to the bag itself, I, I neatly rolled up one end and, and taped it in place um, pull the upper receiver out you'll notice the manufacturer markings on here mil spec packaging um, it's the bag was manufactured april of 1998 so again that's the manufacturing period for the bag itself that would indicate to us that this upper receiver conversion kit left the factory sometime after April of 1998, probably within the same year. Um, 
So I'll set that bag aside. So here's the upper receiver. Like I said, it's a complete upper receiver unit. It's got the charging handle. It's got the nine millimeter bolt carrier in it. This is ready to be placed on a lower receiver and put into service. A couple of the significant features that stand out on this upper receiver design is the uh, unburnt uh, propellant block here, the shortened ejection port door. These hand guards are taken from the U.S. Army's M231 port firing weapon design. The M231 port firing weapon was used on Bradley Armored Fighting Vehicles up until the early 90s. They started taking them off and omitting them from the Bradley design just prior to the first Desert Storm in 1991. Uh, you have the fold-up front sight. Those of you that are Colt fans and are familiar with their product line, you will you will recall seeing this folding front sight reappearing in the 6940 series product line later in the 2000s. The overall length of this from the back of the charging handle to the muzzles uh, looks like it's probably right at 14 inches. So that gives you an idea just how small this design is. So I guess let's start out looking at the charging handle and the bolt carrier group. The charging handle is just a standard AR-15 pattern charging handle. There's uh, nothing out of the ordinary about it. As you can see here, if you're already familiar with the AR-15 design, you'll see that this 9mm bolt carrier group is significantly different from a standard 5.56 AR-15 bolt carrier group. I've got one here uh, just to show real quick. Um, looking down from the top, you'll see the differences. Uh, the 9mm bolt carrier group has a smaller opening on the top. Your carrier keys are different. The AR-15 design redirects gas down into the bolt carrier. The 9mm design operates on what's called direct blowback. So the force created by the ignition of the propellants push the bolt carrier group straight back. Therefore, it does not need the, uh, the carrier key of the AR-15 design to catch capture the gases and, and direct it in, inside the bolt carrier group. <clears throat> it does not, the nine millimeter design does not use the rotating bolt like the AR-15 does. Um, the nine millimeter upper obviously does not have a forward assist, so you don't have the forward assist notches. You'll see here that the bottoms are quite a bit different. One thing that Colt designers had to integrate into the upper or into the bolt carrier design is it needed more mass. And so they accomplished that by putting a weight inside the bolt carrier. Um, right here is a coil pin that retains that weight. Uh, that weight is removable, but there's really, from a user standpoint, there's really no reason to unless that pin becomes damaged or something. Uh, you can see inside there the firing pin. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take the bolt apart. Um, there's the bolt, uh, bolt face, and the ex extractor. Then there's the other side of it, your firing pin, retaining pin. So getting to the upper receiver itself. You'll see it's got standard A1 pattern rear sights. You've got a C here for Colt, the splintered A for Anchor Harvey, uh, the unexpended propellant deflector, the shortened ejection port door. There's a top view of the hand guards and the folding front sight. You'll notice the hand guards, um, they are interchangeable left and right. 
the tops and bottoms are the same. The front plate on the upper receiver. I've seen a couple of different things speculated online. One is, is the front plate is used to brace the upper receiver against like a door frame or window frame on a vehicle to accomplish a stable firing platform. <laughs> and I've even seen somebody say that, oh, that plate was used for face strikes. Um, the uh, the R0933s were used by the Department of Energy to guard nuclear shipments. Um, I don't see the guards letting anybody get close enough to do a face strike. So that's kind of a silly, uh, silly theory. You'll see here the chrome lining in the barrel. Um, again, this upper receiver's unfired. It's pretty, uh, pretty immaculate. You'll see there's a chamber. Uh, no discoloration or in, uh, of any type. Um, there's no wear inside the uh, upper receiver there. So let's, uh, there's a front sight. Sorry, I didn't show that to you. It's got a square A2 style uh, front sight post. Given the time frame, I'm kind of surprised to see that, but... All right, let's take off the hand guards and look at the barrel. These hand guards come off just like any other carbine hand guard. You pull back on the slip ring and you remove your left and right uh, sections. <clears throat> so here's your hand guards. Inside, they've got small heat shields riveted in place. Length on one of those is only five inches. So it's pretty small. Rate of fire on these, what I read, was about a thousand rounds a minute, and that's a that's rocking and rolling for something so small. I bet it was interesting to fire on, on auto. So if you look at the barrel there, I did read online that there were two variants. There was a standard R0633 and then a heavy barrel variant. This almost looks like a heavy barrel variant because you'll see if you look real close, the barrel's thicker behind the front sight than it is out here at the muzzle. So I may have one of the heavy barrel variants here. You would think the product label would, would dictate that, but I'm not familiar enough with the, des the design to really know. Uh, but you see there on top of the barrel, it says nine millimeter. You rotate the barrel. You've got CMP, CB, so that's Colt, magnetic particle tested, and the CB is chrome bore. Uh, you have an O there that's a chroming indicator as well. So um, chrome, chrome barrel and chamber. So again, there's a left side. There's uh, nothing out of the ordinary on that left side. Just looks like a standard uh, A1 upper receiver. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is you'll see two, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a variant or, or how to label it, but you see some of these upper receivers on the internet with a sling swivel mounted here. And then you have this one that does not have a sling swivel. I've seen speculation that the units with sling swivels installed were the ones that went to the DOE and examples like this without the sling swivel are the ones that went onto the commercial market. Um, so I wanted to share that difference with you um, and that product speculation. Again, I haven't seen anything to validate any of what's being uh what i'm sharing with you it's uh just me repeating some stuff that i've seen doing some research so if you guys have any knowledge of the r0633 design or the history of it or if you have any questions uh post down below thanks again for stopping by and, and spending some of your time with me and i'll talk to you again soon thanks